Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Bean here, and I'm doing a different kind of video today. I honestly just did not feel like, um, one, putting makeup on. So this is what I naturally look like, and this is about, this is me without makeup. You can hear Mike's playing video games in the background. Um, but I'm actually also filming uh, another vlog right now too, so I've got a couple going on right now. But I wanted to go through some bookish stuff here today. It's going to be kind of like a vlog style unboxing, I suppose. Um, or haul unboxing thing. Because I got some books that I bought. And then I got some books from the library. And I've got um, a couple boxes. So. Um... This is kind of a weird angle. I'm filming right in front of a window. Um, so this is all literally all natural light right now. Well, I have a light on behind me, but otherwise it's because the room would look very dark and also it's very messy. And that, if you want to see, I will also have a vlog up on my other channel that will be a cleaning vlog because I have not been writing. So it's a cleaning vlog right now <laughs> instead. Um, but yeah, I got my coffee. It's lukewarm because it's afternoon. By afternoon, I mean it's 12.15 on April 7th, the Wednesday, and I have some unboxings to do. So I'm actually going to start with a little haul that I got. Um, so Kayla and I went to Barnes & Noble a um, couple, last week I think, the week before that, something like that. Anyways. Went to Barnes & Noble just for a couple things. It didn't get too many. Um, but I really wanted a copy of uh, The Archive of the Forgotten by A.J. Hackwith. Because I absolutely loved the first book in the series, um, The Library of the Unwritten. And now I have the sequel, finally, because it's out in paperback. Um, this story follows a library. Um, it's, this follows Claire, who is the head librarian of Hell's Library, which is a library where books that have not been finished end up. Um, so books that were started by their authors and then never finished. I am so guilty of that. Um, and she basically keeps track of them and makes sure they don't come to life or escape or anything of the sort. And yeah, so that's what this follows. I'm not sure what the second one, um, is I believe oh the, the second one is about some sort of ink magical ink so I'm intrigued the cover kind of shows that a little bit too it's very cool I'm very excited to read this one hopefully soon so yes picked that one up and then also picked up because I have no self-control apparently picked up Heartstopper volume one so if you haven't seen this, this has been going around a lot and I actually sat down and I read the entire thing in one sitting and it is so cute and it was so cute that I got volume two and I got volume three because these boys are the cutest things ever and no one can tell me otherwise. They're just adorable. <laughs> so yes. All right. And then the last thing we did is I actually grabbed, um, there's a thing at Barnes & Noble, at least at my Barnes & Noble, that is a spring fling with the book. And now I actually, one of my good friends, Christy, is the one who did all the wrapping and made the flowers, so I really wanted to keep it anyways. Um, but the book I picked, it was, it's basically a blind date with a book, so you, there's a description on here of the book, and then you don't know what the book is, it's wrapped in paper. So... The description for this is an eerie dive, a story that has you looking back over your shoulder on every page. I was like, all right, I've been into some thrillers lately and opened it because I have no patience. Um, opened it as soon as we got to the car and it was The Chill by Scott Carson. Um, it is a thriller. I All I know about it is this little tiny little blurb, which is about, um, I'm just gonna read it because it's gonna be so much easier if I just do that. Still waters run deep. Far upstate in New York's ancient forests, a drowned village lies beneath the dark waters of the Chilwaukee res Reservoir. Early in the 20th century, the town was destroyed for the greater good, bringing water to the millions living downstate. Or at least that's what the politicians from Manhattan insisted at the time. 
The local families, settled there since before America's founding, were forced from their land, but they didn't move far, and some didn't move at all. Now, a century later, a dark prophecy looms, and the time has come for it to be fulfilled. I don't know. We'll see. I'm really hoping this doesn't end up being pretty racist. I know there's been a lot of that um, being brought up in the book world, and I won't stand for that. I don't know. I don't know. I No. Just know. All right. I think I'm going to hop into one of my unboxings now. I'm going to unbox the Beacon Box from... What is it? This is April from March. So I'm going to do that one. I need water. Where's my water? Coffee empty. We need water. Okay. So I got my beacon box. I got my water. Stay hydrated, guys. All right. So this is the beacon box. It's overstuffed for um, March. And I did look into it, but I don't remember what was in it. So I, let, let, let's, let's go. Let's go. Ready? Set. Go. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, there's two books. That's cool. Did I know there were going to be two books? I might have. I don't remember. All right. So the theme for this, for the March box was magical retellings. Okay. First thing, box. Box. Mug. <gasps> That's right. They were starting their new collection. The Stalking Jack the Ripper series. Oh my god, it's adorable. And here we've got uh, Thomas Cresswell and Audrey Rose here peeking around a wall. And I'm pretty sure that that figure is supposed to be the Ripper. Oh my gosh. I thought I missed this because I didn't get the January box. So I thought that I had missed this. Um, this mug. So this is very exciting. All of these I ordered also, like, I got these, I paid for these at the beginning of March. So these are all coming now, which is interesting. But yes, so that is the first thing. I got a really cool mug, which I'm very excited about. I, I don't need any more mugs, but I love mugs. I should probably get rid of some of my old ones. Maybe I'll do something like that. Okay, next we've got a notepad from, it looks like a quote from The Court of Miracles. And it's, it ends where it begins. And this is super cool. I really like this. So yeah, you've got the Court of Miracles on here, but yeah. Ah! Stupid outside bites. That's cool. I could always use more notebooks, so let's be honest here. All right, next we've got a, a little tote bag. Tote bags. Okay, and it says... The stars incline us, they do not bind us by, from these violent delights, which, if you've seen my video, is on my TBR for this month. I haven't gotten to it yet because I've hardly read anything this month, but yes. So this is really cool. I really like this design. That's cool. That's happy. Yay! Bag! All right, and then we've got our... our um, our picture frame so they're doing glass picture frames as their collectible items for this year which is really quite cool i'm very excited about it and it's the same person in the middle interesting all right i haven't actually looked at this yet all right so it's the same person in the picture whoever she is she's going to be in a lot of people's videos now um and it says i love you a thousand times over and i will never apologize for it i don't know if you can see it no, probably not, but it's written right there. And now I don't have a picture in here, so it's written right here. You can't tell. You really can't tell. I have an empty picture frame. Hey, look, you can see outside. This is my setup right now, just so you know. Isn't that exciting? Oh, geez. All the papers. And then we'll get to the books. They also include a monthly print in here, and this one is, it says Khalid and Shrazad. Shaharzad. Um, so I don't know. This is super pretty. I love this art. It's so pretty. All right. And then we've got, this is really cool. We've got a little print here from the book Rise of Night and Sword by Miram Wade. And then we've got our recipe card. The quote on it is the same as what's on the bag. Why do I have a stuffy nose right now? It's ridiculous. 
It's the stars incline us, but they do not bind us. Um, and the recipe is Juliet's almond cookies. <gasps> almond cookies, guys. That's so exciting. You make cookies. Exciting. Okay. And then we got a bookmark for the second book. And the second book we got is the bonus book, I guess. Flatten it out. It's not flat right now. It's bothering me. It's a soft cover of Called Upon by Bethany Lee. So this is a really cool cover. I really like it. And now let's read the back. Told from the perspective of three seemingly unconnected teenagers, Called Upon barrels through a series of twists and turns that merge together with jaw-dropping results. All right. Caitlin, the social pariah of her high school, is so relieved to have made friends at Camp Overlook and to have caught the attention of a real, live, honest-to-goodness boy that she is willing to look past the camp's anomalies, creepy, gray-eyed counselors, 24-hour video surveillance, and campers falling ill and then disappearing quietly into the night. But when Caitlin begins feeling strange symptoms herself, she can no longer pretend that Overlook is a run-of-the-mill summer camp. She and her new friends must race to solve the mystery of Camp Overlook, even if it means facing some difficult truths and uncovering some painful family secrets before she is the next camper to vanish. Okay. Interesting. We'll see. I am willing to give this one a shot. It doesn't it's it sounds like a YA kind of campfire thriller. So I'm intrigued. I think it might be cute. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a quick quick one to read. Um but yeah, so that's cool. Book number one and book number two I already have because it's Sing Me Forgotten by Jessica S. Olson. Um, I pre-ordered this book and I did not look to check and see if this was a book of the month for any of my book boxes, which now I'm realizing I probably should have. Uh, oops. So this does come with an author letter and the print and it is, I believe this one, yeah, this is also signed. So, um, <laughs> now I have two copies of the same book. Uh, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. I will just be giving one away. This is a Phantom of the Opera retelling, I believe. If I remember correctly, that's what it is. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, it's very short, but it is a Phantom of the Opera retelling of sorts, I believe. And that... Is my beacon box so so the other things that i have to unbox first i want to show you guys i went to um the library yesterday on tuesday because i actually had an interview there so i'm interviewing for new jobs right now and one of the jobs that i interviewed for was a part-time library um assistant and because my ultimate goal is to go and get my master's of in information and library science and to work with archive work with archives work in the archives so work with old documents and to learn history of things um, my goal is to start probably I was hoping to start this year but I don't think that's going to happen um so instead my goal is now to start in the spring next year so this time next year um start taking classes at my local university and uh work into getting that so yes um, but I had my interview there. I find out on Friday if I got a job, uh, but I did the thing where I picked up books because I was at the library and yes, I'm trying to get back into that because I do, I do miss going to the library. The library has always been kind of a safe haven for me. So I'll do a video on that at some point about my connection to, a, to the library because I love going to libraries. I've always loved going to libraries and I think they're very underrated. So and I had a nice long conversation with the interview guy about that. So, um, the first book I picked up was Molokai by Alan uh, Brennert. And all I know about this one is it is a story um, about Hawaii from like a hundred or so years ago. And 
This version is old and this is one of the reasons I love library books is because you can tell that many people have read them and that people love them and that uh, it's it's a valued book because it's at a library, especially a small town library where they don't they aren't able to keep all of their books. They're only able to keep the ones that actually people check out, people want to read, and people want to read this one. And this one is, I believe, the first in a series? Duology? Something like that. Because there's two more with the kind of similar titles. Uh, but yeah, so I'm very excited to read this and I've heard a lot about it, actually. I've heard of it. Let's go with that. I've heard of it. I've seen it around. I don't know a lot about it except for Hawaii, and I have barely read anything about Hawaii, so I probably would like, I would really like to, so I'm excited for this one. And then I picked up, um, because I have not yet read them, I picked up volume three and volume four of Lock and Key uh, by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rod Rodriguez. I haven't watched the Netflix series yet. Um, I have read the first two graphic novels and I really, really liked them. Um, they're super tense, super creepy. Uh, the third one is called Crown of the Shadows and volume four is Keys to the Kingdom. So I am intrigued to see where this series goes and then maybe I'll watch the series. I don't know. Thoughts? We'll see. And then, because I can, I picked up... Um, some of uh, Lumberjanes. So I haven't read Lumberjanes since uh, Parents' Day came out like a year or two ago. So I picked up the next three books in the series and it is, we've got The After Crime. And I believe that's followed by Jackalope Spring Eternal. And then finally, Indoor Recess. So these are super quick reads, super fun. I love the art styles in here. And this is all about like a, or here you go. This is all about like a group of LGBTQIA plus uh, girls who are at a summer camp, um, the Lumberjane Summer Camp, which is kind of a Girl Scout type of thing, it seems like. But... It's, there's supernatural things happening everywhere and it is so cute and these are one sitting reads every single time I've read that read um one of them and I'm so excited to get back into it because I am a child at heart so no argument there water break <sighs> I got two more things to unbox for you guys and then that'll probably be the end of this video um so the first thing I'm actually gonna unbox is my book of the month that was upside down, it is my book of the month. And it was my birthday month, cause my birthday's in April. Woo! Um, so I've never, I'm a BFF of a book of the month. Um, I actually don't know what that entails for my birthday, cause I haven't had a birthday where I've been a BFF yet. So what it does, what it did mean was that I got a free book, which is cool, and I'll take that. Come on open. I need to sharpen this so badly. Ugh. All right. Chill. So let's open it together, see what they gave me, because it's bigger than I thought it should be. Oh, but are these books just longer? They are. They're just longer than I thought they were going to be. Interesting. Okay. So the book of the month that I chose was um, Arsenic and Adobo by Mia M. Monsen. Mansana, hmm, <laughs> Maransala, Maransala. Uh, I don't really know a lot about this one, but I want to read more cozy mysteries again. I used to be super into them, and then I kind of drifted, and now I'm trying to drift back into it. And this is the first in the Tita Rosie's kitchen mystery, so I am intrigued by this. Also, I love these covers. These covers make me so happy. Um, so I got that one. That was my chosen book of the month. And then for my birthday, uh, I got to choose another one. And I ended up choosing uh, Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bowley. I really don't know a lot about this book, honestly. Um, I believe it has Native American origins, which is really awesome. And we don't see that enough. Um, also, it's so pretty. This book is freaking gorgeous, guys. 
Um, I haven't heard a lot about it either, but I'm very intrigued. This is a thriller, a Native American thriller. Okay, hold on. I'm going to read this because this, to me, sounds very intriguing. This is a chunker of a book. I'm so excited. Okay, 18-year-old Downies Fontaine has never quite fit in both in her hometown and on the nearby Ojibwe reservation. She dreams of a fresh starting at college, but when family tragedy strikes, Donnie's puts her future on hold to look after her fragile mother. The only bright spot is meeting Jamie, a charming new recruit on her brother Levi's hockey team. Yet even as Donnie's fa falls for Jamie, she senses the dashing hockey star is hiding something. Everything comes to light when Donnie's witnesses a shocking murder, thrusting her into an FBI investigation of a lethal new drug. Reluctantly, Donnie agrees to go undercover, drawing on her knowledge of chemistry and Ojibwe traditional medicine to track down the source. But the search for truth is more complicated than Donnie's imagined, exposing secrets and old scars. At the same time, she grows concerned with an investigation that seems more focused on punishing the offenders than protecting the victims. Now, as the deceptions and deaths keep growing, Donnie must learn what it means to be a strong... Onishinabe Kwe, Ojibwe woman. I'm so sorry if I butchered that. I am so sorry. And how far she'll go for her community, even if it tears apart the only world she's ever known. That sounds so cool. Okay. It's um, own voices. It's a thriller. It's an FBI murder mystery. Yes, please. Thank you. Good talk. Okay, bye. Feel a little bad for not reading the other description, but we're moving on now. What are we moving on to? <sighs> the April Unplugged, because apparently all my boxes come at the same time. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. He was the one who brought in all of the boxes, so... I do have pants. I do have shorts on. I actually have two pairs of shorts on. So, I'm not... not wearing pants. Just so you know. That is bottle opener. Kniffy. Sorry. I hope that doesn't break any rules. Cut the tape. And unplugged. Let's open. Ooh, oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot this theme. I'm so excited for this theme. So the theme for April's adult fiction unplugged box is Venom. Venom. That's such a cool picture. I love it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <coughs> Sorry. Ooh. So first thing in here is a big box. It's a big box. It's a big box. Ooh. Rattling out that's a good thing. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Oh, it turned on. Oh. It's a lamp. That's so cool! Oh my gosh, they sent us useful things. Okay, I'm excited now. I got a lamp, there is a charging cord. Floopy. Bendy, whatever. Alright. Lamp. It just, oh! And it says light it up. I'm blind. You can, sorry, the garbage truck is here apparently. I'm sorry if you can still hear the dump truck in the background. I have no patience, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, it says light it up on it, and it's, so it's from Crescent City. Oh my gosh. And apparently, according to my little spoiler card, it is an unplugged exclusive. It's a Crescent City light that says light it up. That's, that's adorable. That makes me happy. Okay, I will be using that quite a bit. Box. All right, next. Ooh. Ooh. 
Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff in this box. All right, let's go with this. What is this? A hand and foot scrub. Uh, it says Crea's Resurrections Balsam, um, hand and foot scrub, balsam, rum, and bones. Uh, foot scrub, foot scrub. Oh, uh, the Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst. So, that's cool. I don't really know anything about that book, honestly. Next, we've got... But scrubs are always good to have. They really are. Especially right now, as I'm getting back into... As I'm getting back into running. Next, we've got a baking mix that's a um, unplugged exclusive, it says. Izzy's Stress Baking Mug Cake Kit. Oh my goodness. It's, it's got sprinkles in it. I don't know if you can see. It's got sprinkles in it. It's vanilla. Oh my goodness. What is this from? Because I need to know. Grey's Anatomy. I don't watch Grey's Anatomy. Callie and Brittany, you both will appreciate this, I guess, a lot more than I do. Because they are big Grey's Anatomy fans. I am just the oddball out because it's a lot of seasons to watch. They're only like 340 or something like that. Okay, next. We've got Candle. Secret History by Donna Tratt. Hmm. Okay. So this is a beautifully novel. Ooh, it's a Woodwick candle. Okay. It's a beautifully novel candle themed Henry, fall, dark, and snarky. Morning light can make the most vulgar things tolerable. Raspberry, lemon, and vanilla. So here we go. And then it's a Woodwick candle with all of the glitter. Oh, that smells so good. It smells like raspberry lemonade. It smells like summer, which is funny because I think they were, oh, it's not fall, it's tall. I, I can read. Ooh. Tall, dark, and snarky. Okay, this kind of sounds like a book I should read now. <laughs> Tall, dark, and snarky. I love it. Okay. Next, we've got... What is this? This is a shampoo bar from the Fairy Hideout. Um, it's for Shaker Heights. Uh, it smells like white tea, jasmine, and perfect suburbs. <clears throat> so you shouldn't inhale like that that was way too close <laughs> but yeah and this is from shampoo bar little fires everywhere again another book i haven't read you do smell the jasmine though i think that just overwhelmed me for a second but that actually does smell really good that would smell really good in here, that's for sure. Okay, cool, cool. We're almost there, guys, I promise. <laughs> All right, I've got Bookish Balms. This is from Bookish Balms. Hold on, let me get it out of the bag. I believe that this is a lip scrub. I think that's what I saw on here. Mm, yeah, lip scrub. It's a Romeo and Juliet themed lip scrub. It says Deadly Love from Bookish Balms. I'm not a fan of Romeo and Juliet, but I appreciate the irony. Ooh, that does smell really good though. It smells like roses. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, yeah, so. Lip scrub. That's cool. I like our lip scrubs. And then we've got a bookmark out oh, from Bram Stoker. Listen to them. The Children of the Night. What music they make. We got on this side. 
So it is Dracula. And then we learn from failure, not from success. Another great quote from Dracula. So that's cool. I always like bookmarks. Can never have too many bookmarks. Ooh, what is this? Okay. So we've got... Oh! Oh, that's cool. Okay, so we've got our 2021, our April adult photo challenge, which I will try to actually take pictures this time. Actually, maybe I'll do that later today and I can film that in my other video something. Okay, and then, okay, so it's actually got on the back, so they always provide some sort of journaling prompts usually. This is actually different. So what this is, is it's tips on dealing with toxic slash venomous behavior. So that's so cool. Okay. That's really cool. Okay. Wow. Like, how do I identify what toxic behavior is and how can you respond to these behaviors? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Good. I Toxic relationships are always something that I feel like is um, not talked about. People don't acknowledge them nearly as much. Like, people joke about, oh, you're toxic, or there's a toxic thing. That's a toxic relationship. But honestly, if you're looking at toxic relationships, let me go on my little rant here. Toxic relationships, the number one toxic relationship that I can come up with right now is Romeo and Juliet. Like, honestly, that relationship is terrible. There is, that is not a love story. That is a story of... <laughs> Story of two stupid teenagers who fell in love, who fell in love. They think they were in love, but they might not have actually been. It was basically a rebound for Romeo, and Juliet's like, oh my god, a male. I love him. Sweetie. Sweetie, no. And it ended in the death of six people. And it, people, people love it. I, I hate Romeo and Juliet, in case you can't tell. I love Shakespeare, and I love the irony of the story, but I hate Romeo and Juliet. Okay, my little rant is done here. <laughs> but, so that's really cool. I will post a picture of this on my Instagram. Because this is so important. So important, guys. So important. Okay. And then we've got, ooh. We've got a letter from the author of the book that we got. And there's, there's, there's a picture on the back of skulls. Little skulls. And then... We've got our signed book plate and the book. Oh, huh. So it's The Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Thurst. Huh. All right, cool. So we actually got something that referred to it. This was Bone Makers themed. The hand and foot scrub. So you can use a hand and foot scrub while I'm reading a thriller. All right, ready? Because I am so ready for this. I'm very intrigued. <laughs> All right. This is a standalone epic fantasy set in a brand new world of towering mountains and sparkling cities in which a band of aging warriors has a second chance to defeat dark magic and avenge a haunting loss. This sounds a little bit like Kings of the Wild. Hold on. Let's read the actual thing. 25 years ago, five heroes risked their lives to defeat the bone maker, Eklor, a corrupt magician who created an inhuman army using animal bones. But victory came at a tragic price. Only four of the heroes survived. Since then, Kreia, the group's leader, has exiled herself to a remote tower and devoted herself to one purpose, resurrecting her dead husband. But such a task requires both a cache of human bones and a sacrifice. For each day he lives, she will live one less. Kreia would rather live one year with her husband than a hundred without him. But using human bones for magic is illegal in Voss. The dead are burned, as, as are any bone workers who violate the law. Yet Kreia knows where she can find the bones she needs, in the battlefield where her husband and countless others lost their lives. But to find the laws of the land exposes a terrible possibility. Maybe the dead don't rest in peace after all. Five warriors, one broken, one gone soft, one pursuing a simple life, one stuck in the past, and one who should be dead. Their story should have been finished, but evil doesn't stop because someone once said the end. 
Okay. Not like Kings of the Wild then. That is wow. Okay, I'm intrigued. I want I'm I'm very curious about this now. This sounds very good. Huh. Oh, that's why I know her. She wrote The Queen of the Blood. The Queen of Blood. The R Queens of Rathena series. Um this sounds super intriguing. I'm very excited. Okay. I'm going to put all this stuff with it, but that is so cool. That is so interesting. Um, and it's interesting that it came in a book about venom and toxic behavior. So I'm curious if this book has toxic, has a toxic relationship in it. I mean, it kind of sounds like it does, but we'll see. So that is what I have for you guys here today. I hope you enjoyed my vlog style video because I really just didn't want to set things up um today so we went for a little bit of a different style of everything i hope you liked it if you did now is the perfect time to give it a thumbs up and to hit that subscribe button down below we post videos every tuesday thursday and sunday and if you want to be reminded when we post these videos hit the little bell icon down below until next time guys stay safe stay healthy and keep reading bye